What is the Underground Railroad? It was not a steam train in tunnels underground, so why was it called that? The Underground Railroad was a network of abolitionists helping the enslaved African Americans escape in a series of shelters and secret roads that traversed the United States on their way to freedom in Canada. This network of people would have been organized in secret since any communication between enslaved people was prohibited and the ability for them to read and write was illegal. Most of this was done by abolitionists in free states helping freed African Americans connect with those that were still enslaved. It wasn't until 1830, while the first railroad track was being constructed in Pennsylvania, that those abolitionists realized that they could speak in code out in the open if they used the same terminology from the burgeoning railroads. And the term Underground Railroad was born. The Jordan House is the eighth stop on the John Brown Freedom Trail here in Iowa. John Brown was a radical abolitionist who wanted to start an uprising of slaves to overthrow the institution of enslavement. He made several trips across Iowa and stayed many times with landowner and businessman James C. Jordan while he raised money and preached about the ills of slavery. On February 17, 1859, John Brown and his heavily armed group of 10 men and 12 freedom seekers arrived at the Jordan Farm on the edge of the Walnut Creek Township. It was written by a reporter of this trip that they arrived and rested among the timber of the Jordan Farm. One of the most asked questions when people visit the Jordan House is, where did the slaves hide? The West Des Moines Historical Society purchased this house in 1978 to save the place from being demolished. Knowing the rumors that James Jordan was involved with the Underground Railroad, the early society members looked for clues within the home to find hiding places or a tunnel that was rumored to be dug between the house and the barn to help those seeking freedom on the Underground Railroad. After much study, and further understanding of our landscape during the 1850s, the educated consensus is that slaves would never have been hidden in the house. The two-story, six-room farmhouse had one entrance to the cellar at that time. And with the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 making it illegal for anyone to assist an escaping slave, James would not have put his family in harm's way if a hiding place had been discovered in his basement. And today, when we look at the land around the Jordan House, we have a hard time imagining what this land would have looked like in 1859. But if you can close your eyes and think of the lovely timbered hills behind the house, with vast open prairies to the west with tall prairie grasses, at that time, the land would have been grazed by cattle, roamed by timber wolves, and stalked by mountain lions. Not a safe place to be at night, James would have a few outbuildings on his property that would offer shelter to the boys tending the cattle or storing food for them in the frozen winters. And those would have been more than a few miles from the house, able to hide those seeking shelter in February of 1859, but safely away from the immediate yard of the Jordan house. If the sheriff came looking for the freedom seeking party, James could claim that he had not seen them and not been lying. While James Jordan was also an abolitionist, he would not have jeopardized his family and farm by openly breaking the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 and running the Underground Railroad trips himself. But he would allow John Brown to use his land, helping those seeking their freedom. <laughs>